Welcome to episode 100 of the Startup Show today. Wow. Uh, isn't that my job? Why? Episode 100. <laughs> I'm going to be switching roles today. I'm well. supposed to interview you. <laughs> Thank you, David. That's so, uh, interesting. <laughs> welcome to the Startup Show. Thank Cedric. you, David. Thank you. It's exciting. Welcome to episode 100 of the Startup Show from Global Tech Box. And today we are reversing the roles. Cedric is in the hot seat, and I will be asking the questions. Thank Welcome, you very much. Cedric. Thank you, thank you. It's very special, you know, after almost you know, 100 videos just on the startup show to switching the sides and being kind of like able to talk a little bit about myself, which I yep. usually hesitate to do because I want to put <laughs> the entrepreneurs in the, in the middle of and give them the exposure. But I get so many questions from my audience that I feel maybe it's a time to give some insights about me and, and, and my motivation for this. Yeah, so um, let's maybe rewind a little bit before the show started and then a little bit further back. Yes. Where, do, where do you come from? I was born and raised in, in Zurich, childhood in Zurich, high school, Matura. Um, and then I was like uh, at the point where I decided to do a kind of like a gap year um, mm. in Israel. And from this one gap year, it turned out to be that I stayed in Israel for seven years. Okay. Um, along the way, I, I did my bachelor's, I got married, got my first experience. But what was maybe more crucial was that I kind of like saw the startup scene in Tel Aviv mm. and I was exposed to it in a very significant way. I was right. also kind of my role back then was in charge of innovation consulting uh, where I tried to do research and tried to stay on top of the game, everything that was going on in the fintech and medtech sectors for a year and a half. And that kind of like gave me the feeling like I really want to do something by myself. Mm. And that's kind of like where it started. But currently, you know, like I live, we were back in Zurich, I'm currently doing my master's. Uh, so that's a little bit of my life. To, the to history now. so far. Yes. <laughs> and as when you were younger as a child, did you already feel something of the, of the startup bug? Did you have any influence from parents or relatives? It's funny you're asking. Recently, I had a meeting with a guy that I met at a conference, and he knows my dad, and he told me that my dad is very entrepreneurial, hmm. even though he's in banking. Right. He has his entrepreneurial mindset, so maybe I got it from him. Uh, we actually never verbalized that. like We never spoke about this, but, but I was really impressed that people who are in different fields still need this entrepreneurial thinking. For me personally, I always had this kind of like passion for, for gadgets, for technology. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was very young, I already... Um, always wanted to have the newest gadget. It right. started with a great Game Boy, you remember those, where you could only basically pay Tetris all the way till today <laughs> when I always need the newest phone and smartphone and, yeah. and gadgets. Did you imagine as a child, as a kid, that you would one day have a video show with viewers from around the world? No, no, I still, I still can't believe it because you know, like. So today, how did how did that get started? How did you start this well, uh, you know, video I, journey? I, it was um, October 2015 when I kind of like decided, like, okay, like it's time to start something on my own. Yeah. I kind of like didn't have the idea of a PNL based startup or business that I said, like, okay, I want to run this. I wanted to just. I was also still working and finishing up my my studies, but I, I really wanted to have something on my own. It was also more like a trial and error. I wanted to know how do you register a domain, how mm. do you set up a website, and, and just to, to have all of this experience. And that's kind of like I was looking at, at what do I enjoy and what do I like to talk about, what, what am I passionate about, and then kind of like you crystallized it, like let's say startup technology and innovation were kind of like my areas of passion. Right. And based on that, I started to write weekly uh, blog posts. Okay. Back then we called it Startup Monday, hmm. where we choose one specific disruptive industry, find three startups, and then write a blog post about them. Mm. And then this kind of evolved because I felt like that was early 2016 that I felt like it was, I wasn't receiving the feedback based on these blog posts mm. that I wanted. Right. So I did a trial and I still very appreciative to all of these like 10 people who said yes to my early <laughs> early footsteps of, of video production. Mm -hmm. And even though my video production back then was very bad and I really had a, a steep learning curve, over, over that time, it was pretty clear based on the feedback I got that video is the right thing to do. So sure. we, we kind of like went all in into video um, and that's when we slowly developed the startup show where we now have a, like a specifically for season two that is coming up soon. We will have really a nice show that is dedicated towards investors. Okay. And, and we will really have like this nice audience that we already built to watch this show and hopefully enjoy and get entertained. So what's what's the primary purpose behind it? Why do you do it? Uh, besides, I mean, you just talked a little bit about it, but um, is it 
entertainment? Is it information? Yeah. Sure. What drives you? Sure. I mean, you know, over the last uh, couple of years, I've been thinking a lot about like what I want to do with my life on the long term. Right. And one of my key things is that I've realized that I really enjoy thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that and to think about like what the future holds for us is by seeing what's not yet uh, mainstream. Okay. And the only way to get to there and to see what people are working on and not yet on the market are startups. Mm -hmm. So I would like to at some point you know, raise maybe my own venture capital fund and being able to invest in startups mm -hmm. that I believe in. That's my long-term goal and that's what I keep in mind with, with the startup show. So my goal is really to build up this nice audience that are waiting to see which startup is next. Uh, definitely inspired by Dragon's Dean, Shark Tank, all of these shows that are already out there, but more focused on using distribution channels such as social media, right. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. And is it for profit right now? How do you make money or do you make money off of, <laughs> off of the show? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's very important that my audience knows that the startups that I feature on the startup show, mm -hmm. they can always come for free. Yeah. There will be a point in time in the future where I will announce that from now on, the startups that I feature, I also invest money. Mm -hmm. But right now, this is not the case. Okay. Right now, for me, it's very important that people who watch the show, they know with 100% certainty that no one can pay me enough mm -hmm. to be featured on the show. So those are the startups that I really think they're cool. It doesn't mean that they're going to be successful. I'm sure you know that you know the success rate of startups is not always high, but you know, like at least my audience knows that I believe in these startups. Right. Number two, yes, we, we make money, we have sponsors, we have people that we produce content together with them. So mm -hmm. you probably have seen maybe Carpool series right. with Mazda and Jeep, and we have a sponsor Huawei Technologies who helps us with the equipment. Um, and where we sometimes you know also produce content with our let's say talk show setting to help our let's say clients uh, to, to get video content out there. Mm. Some exposure and visibility. Yes, yes, and that's, that's how we make money. Yeah. Um, but again, for me, it's very important and very crucial that the startup show is kind of like a separate entity that is always uh, independent. Mm. And in the future, there will be a switch where we'll say from now on, if you see a, a startup on my show, it will be invested or received with investment from my side. Okay, interesting. It's an interesting model to, to pursue. Right? <laughs> and it's nice to have that transparency and the, the clarity about that. And who's, who's your current audience right now? Who's, who are you primarily uh, featuring content for? Right. Um, so we right now, it, it's very hard to, when you, when you pursue a multi-channel strategy like I do, where you kind of like try to storytell on every single channel the way it's supposed to be, uh, it's very hard to find like a comparison where you can say like, okay, this is like kind of like the multiple that you can use, or let's say the kind of like the analytics to compare all of them together. So what we analyze is impressions. Mm -hmm. and, and our kind of like impressions is now just a little bit below half a million per month. So this is something that is definitely already very good. We have yeah. mainly people, you know, Know, Switzerland, Israel, the US, which is also very much based on my network. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you have little uh, pieces and bites there all over the world. We have uh, a lot of following also um, in Portugal, I saw, and France and Germany. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the biggest pillars are Switzerland, Israel, and the States. Okay. Interestingly, you also see uh, on Twitter, let's say, the income of, of the people. Um, so, so we tend to have a, a higher income, male-dominated age between 25 and 40. Okay, interesting. And uh, do you think that you would do something a little bit more like uh, subtitles in different languages to reach certain markets that may not be as fluent in English? You know, I'm open to any kind of suggestion. In general, I would say in the startup world, English is still the preferred one. Mm -hmm. And usually, till now, I didn't get any or too many complaints about the language. Right. I do get a lot of inquiries about German just because okay. we are based in Zurich and right, and right now I live here. But since we have a very global vision, mm -hmm. uh, I believe still English is, is, the, is the language to, yeah. to stay on. Okay. And uh, behind the startup show is globaltechbox.com. It's, mm -hmm. it's a platform. Yeah. And what is the goal with the platform? Um, is, is that a umbrella entity where you plan to have the show and several other initiatives? Or is it primarily for... Uh, the startup show. No, we, we, you know, as I told you before, our tagline is startups, technology, and innovation. So for startups, we we have the startup show. Mm -hmm. um, for technology, we are now starting hopefully early 2018 with tech reviews. Uh, we were fortunate that like 
thanks to these video activities, we get a lot of gadgets sent right. to us okay. uh, for reviews and stuff mm -hmm. like this. Until now, we had nothing really to offer them. Uh, so now we are starting. Now you have the audience too. Now show. we have the audience, and and also like the people who want our, or let's say like companies that want our reviews mm -hmm. uh, to to be featured. So this is something that we are also going to do. I'm also now um, started working on featuring, let's say, content creators in the space uh, to kind of like more collaborate with other YouTubers mm -hmm. and Facebook uh, pages. Um, "Quote unquote," <laughs> like people behind the Facebook pages, right. and um, uh, and that there are a lot of ideas beyond. Let's say you know making dedicated a uh, series. Now we are in the closing of a blockchain series of ten videos where mm -hmm. we have a sponsor, where we have people who say like we want just to be featured as the sponsor of a video series, yeah. and this kind of fits very nicely into say technology innovation. We kind of provide our audience. Uh, interesting topics into, let's say, disruptive ideas, disruptive technologies, mm -hmm. the future. Okay, back to the the show and and uh, the startups that are that you do interviews with. How do you go about choosing the startups to appear on the show? Yeah, it's a very good question. In the beginning, um, I mean, number one, it's a very subjective uh, decision right now. The due diligence process that we go through or we, we make them go through is not um, as sophisticated yet as I would like it to be. Mm -hmm. um, as you're probably aware, like every, there's always like a process behind the, until uh, you get to the ideal state. Um, as of now, we had to kind of increase the bar a little bit because I had like interesting approaches by people. I really love when people come to me. Yeah. Um, but we still have to distinguish between people who, woke up in the morning and had a great idea versus people who are really already in the next step. Let's right. say trying Actually to doing raise, something. Right. Uh, yeah, or trying to raise, let's say, first funding, trying to raise Series A or seed stage even. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of like the ideal moment. In terms of, let's say, when we look at the startup and we say like, okay, well, it has to be something innovative. So it, it doesn't have to be like something that like never heard before. But uh, it can't be something that like been there done that kind of like thing <laughs> where where we've heard of that like another social media channel kind right. of or mm -hmm. those are kind of like the something a little bit more of, disruptive yes or... disruptive or at least like convince me why it's it's disruptive yeah and then there are other aspects I believe today if you are not some kind of like digitalized uh, then it's also very hard to get on the show mm. so um, digital focus digital focus uh, sometimes I now recently started also to focus a little bit more on scalability. Mm -hmm. So that like people are not just looking into let's say becoming market leader in a little village in Zurich, <laughs> uh, but more like okay we we want to conquer let's say Europe and the States and mm -hmm. Australia or whatever like we yeah. want to become global. And one of the pre requirements is always sending me a pitch deck and and answering my questions that I have to to get on the show. Okay, and they can do that uh, find that information via the website. Um, no, as of now, it's still a manual process where where people just reach out to me okay. and send me an email. But they can contact you via the yeah, website. Okay. They can come to our website. You can have my direct mobile on my Facebook pages. Okay. There's enough ways to to contact me, yeah, and uh, people good. also using it. <laughs> like I'm very much out there. My email is there. My my WhatsApp is there. My mobile is there. You can reach me. For me, it's important that whoever wants to reach me can reach me in the most suitable way for them. Okay, that's nice. And you've you've interviewed. Um, well, I'm, I'm guessing to have a hundred episodes, you probably had more than a hundred recordings. So <laughs> you've interviewed a lot of a lot of founders, a lot of startups. What's some advice that you would give that you've learned after interviewing all these people? What advice yeah. would you give to someone wanting to start a business today? I mean, it's a very good question. I mean, you know, when you when you speak to these entrepreneurs, it's so crucial that you have something to answer to. What do you do? So if you speak to people, and I believe, I very much believe in, let's say, the network, that you speak to people and try to get like your idea out, that's number one. But number two, that you can very easily formulate what you're doing. So if you have literally um, 10 seconds to tell someone what you do, then you have to grab this opportunity to right. be able to convince them or explain them what you do. Number two, a lot of the times, the first question is what do you do and then how do you make money? You need to have a reasonable answer. This answer is totally allowed to change over time. Mm -hmm. Many people think, especially in Switzerland, it's bad to change and it's bad to have something that didn't work and then it will work or, mm -hmm. you know, like to, to kind of pivot. Also, I'm a very against the make, fake it till you make it. Um, not because I think it's, you, you have to open up everything that you do, but like you should not be lying about like what you do. Right. And it's totally okay to be in the process of mm -hmm. getting to somewhere. So okay. let's say being able to, to tell people what your vision is and where you stand 
understand is totally fine. And mm -hmm. I don't see that like a, as a negative point if you're only in the early stages or even in the stages of trying to figure out if this is something right. you want to work on. Very allergic to fake it till <laughs> <laughs> Me personally. That's basically it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, be able to, to formulate what you do. And number two, um, being able to tell how you make the business work. That, right. That's kind of like what's interesting to investors. Obviously, you know, there is the team behind it that is interesting that you have to make sure like you, you hire the right people. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, to be able to have a very clear focus, even if it changes, is very important. Of course. Important. Yeah. And what's, what's next for the show? We're hitting. Episode 100. 100, yes. What's next? What's your vision for the future? Yeah, I mean, like, as I told you before, we, we want to become a VC at some point. Mm -hmm. So I want to change that whole, you know, into kind of like a VC thing. What's important to know, like, my goal is by episode 300. So we have 200 episodes more to go. Yeah. And what I've been doing over the last couple of months is sending emails to investors around the world, kind of off record, to kind of understand what makes a video compelling to them mm -hmm. to watch. Many times what investors tell me is like they need the face-to-face -face interaction, mm -hmm. but I still believe that the video can help an investor to at least make a first assessment of, right. of the startup and the charisma of, let's say, a, an entrepreneur. It's, it's interesting, I guess, because as you are interviewing them, it's sort of a neutral setting. If, yeah. the, intro, if the entrepreneur himself is making a video for the VC, obviously it's going to be a little bit um, planned, whereas right. if, if you're doing it, it's, it's impromptu, thus it's natural, and thus the VC can see it as something more natural. So right. I, I can imagine that being attractive. Yes, it is attractive, but not all the VCs see it yet. And yeah. I think uh, it's something that will be coming now, hopefully, or I'm pretty sure like with all the requests that we get about mm. video production, I strongly believe that the next year or two years will be, we will see much, much more uh, video content coming out from all various uh, right, industries. Yeah. Okay. And speaking of, of creating the videos, mm -hmm. um, do you have an elaborate setup? Um, what's, how long does it take from the time that you record? So right now we're, we're recording. When is it actually ready to be posted? Right. So, you know, for, Just a little bit about the technical <laughs> uh, setup. Sure. And I mean, like for me, I don't like to get into a rush with um, getting behind or being in a rush with recordings. Mm -hmm. So I try to be always ready, I would say, three weeks before the publishing. Okay. So uh, that the recording is no later than three weeks before mm -hmm. the actual publishing. But in terms of capabilities, what we can do is we can publish within 24 hours. Okay. So this is not an issue. I avoid it because I want to prefer consistency every Monday mm. to have a new video up versus uh, speed in terms of like, you know, getting out as much as possible. Mm. I know there's, there's different opinions and hopefully when we, we get bigger and scale a little bit, we'll be able to also um, kind of like maybe, you know, push out one or two videos more per week. Okay. So as you know, I interview uh, successful founders for Startup Grind, yeah. and at the end of every session, I don't know if you've heard about the, <laughs> the, the surprise that I have for, for the people I yeah. interview, it's uh, called uh, Rapid Fire Questions. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Yes, yes. Short questions, and the first thing that comes to mind should be what, sure, what you... Sure, let's do it. So uh, what is one item that you own that you would never sell? My smartphone. What is your most unusual skill? Networking. I mean, it's not unusual, but I really enjoy it. <laughs> what is more important to you, strength, speed, or stamina? Stamina. What historical figure do you most admire? That's a good question. Um, most historical figure. Uh, it could be current, past, present, future. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I admire like the classicals like Elon Musk, who, mm -hmm. who really are able to, to think very, very big. So, right. Let's let, if we keep it as entrepreneurial, then I think this is probably a person to look up to. Not mm -hmm. that he does everything perfect, but I think the visions that he has and the way he he also communicates them, I right. think it's really impressive. What's the favorite season of the year? Spring. When was the last time that you tried something new? I try it all the, all the time. <laughs> I get gadgets. I got the, the other day. I got a new watch. So. Okay. <laughs> and uh, team or single founder? Depends. I, I'm single founder, but uh, I see that there's sometimes it would be beneficial to have, let's say, partners. Mm -hmm. um, and it depends on the business, and it depends how much, how many skills you can have in one person. Cats or dogs? Neither. Beer or wine? Wine. Your favorite app? My favorite app. Um, what's up? That's how I communicate. One thing on your bucket list. One thing on my bucket list. 
Uh, oh yeah, uh, fly private jet. <laughs> and if you could, if you could have the attribute of any animal, what animal would you choose? Um, something with stamina. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cedric, thank you really? for <laughs> inviting me to uh, interview you. Uh, I think it was very interesting, and I think your your audience will also find it interesting to find learn more about the man behind the show. Thank you very much, David. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, for tuning in for this special episode of episode 100. We'll be back in early February with season two of the startup show. Some exciting guests are coming and we have a total new setup of the show. Very excited for that. Thank you very much for coming My and, pleasure. and uh, interviewing and I'll see you soon. Have a great day.